Okay, so over the years, many of you have been asking about uh, the crop planning um, spreadsheet I've developed uh, and making it available. And I am happy to say I'm finally able to do so and incorporated with it is a bunch of other tools here. So this video is a quick introduction to what that spreadsheet entails. Uh, if you have purchased the workshop, I am happy to pass on this spreadsheet. Um, however, um, in in short, uh, if you want to walk through the, the spreadsheet, uh, I'm happy to do that as a consult. Uh, it is very detailed, and so it's also, it's a bit complicated, but once you get uh, on a roll, it actually starts to become a little more intuitive, and what it gives you is a whole bunch of information about your operation in general that's really, really useful. Uh, and just going through the worksheet and getting to understand it gives you a much better flow of your business, of the money that's coming in and out, and of uh, what the operational logistics look like. So I'm going to go through this tab by tab just to give you an introduction and hopefully it gives you a sense of what this tool can do for you. So this is the lovely welcome page. Uh, you'll notice it's hosted in uh, Google Docs. Uh, this is actually Google Sheets and so it is online and reason for that is making it more easily accessible to people and if people are having trouble uh, with uh, calculations or understanding something uh, through a consult, we can actually do a lot of stuff in real time. So I'm doing a lot of my work on uh, Google Drive and finding it very convenient for collaboration. So hopefully many of you are familiar with this platform already. So a quick introduction to the spreadsheet. Um, I'm not going to go through these details, but the important thing here is understanding different cells mean different things. Your general rule is you can enter data into the green cells do not enter data into the orange cells. The gray ones are labels and any blue ones you see are titles and often they have comments in them as well. There's a lot of cells which feed other cells and other worksheets. And you can see along the bottom there are a number of worksheets here. You're only seeing about a quarter of them. So there's a lot of links within this uh, spreadsheet. Uh, be care very careful with editing. And unless you know spreadsheets very well, do not edit the orange cells. Just stick your editing to the green cells. That said, if you do know spreadsheets well and you want to take this and adapt it and change it, you are welcome to do so. Uh, the trick is if you make a change and can't figure out what's gone wrong and uh, you want me to fix it for you, uh, I'm sorry, but I need to charge you for that. Uh, but there are some workarounds. And the basic one is when you get the spreadsheet, always have a version of it that you do not touch. It's your original and always copy it into a new one to start it. That way you've got the original to go back to and then you can create a new one for every season. Okay, so let's start going through the, the different tabs here at the bottom just to get an overview of what to expect, what kind of stuff you need to put in, and what you're going to get out. So this part here is just setting your season targets. Most people tend to think of things in terms of how much revenue they want to generate in a week. So basically that's what you're going to start with, is giving, getting that number in there. The next most important thing there is knowing how many trays you can produce at one time. So if you can produce 100 trays at a time, I'm actually assuming you can do that twice a week. So this is how this is built. If you can only do it once a week, that's fine. Uh, we need to know the number of weeks of production you're going to have, because uh, that's going to calculate um, the overall, um, a lot of things overall. And then we're going to set a target average tray price. Now this is going to vary all over the place, depending where you are, what kind of micros you're growing. So I've set mine at $15 per tray based on the model that I've done in the past. So all these things in the orange cells, they're, they're calculations that come out of that information. Down here, we're going to put our season crop targets. So what we're going to do, first thing is list the different crops we want to grow. This spreadsheet is designed to do 11 crops. So that's a decent amount of crops. I know people grow more. Uh, if you're just starting out or even in your first few years, uh, 11 different crops is pretty good. Uh, and if you want to introduce other crops, it's a good idea to sort of drop some and introduce some. So if you want to have more, um, this is not quite ready for that yet. And I could do an upgrade, but that's not going to happen at the moment. So one of the things you're looking at here is just entering your crops and then what percentage of um, your production is going to belong to those crops. So you can see I've entered some of those details here and you can see there's a bunch of calculations that come out through here. Those should be in orange, so I'm just going to make that orange now. All right. Um, this is important actually. This, this list here is going to feed other lists within the uh, spreadsheet, so make sure it gets filled out. I'm actually going to make sure that is in green there just so you've got it. 
I might make a few corrections along the way here. Okay, so crop and input details. This is uh, to use, use to calculate costs. So it's basically for your soil, your sanitizer, and your packaging. And it's basically, here you're going to source this stuff. You know, for example, with soil, if you order 25 yards, that's $68 a yard, and it costs you $392 to get it delivered. All these calculations are based on that. You want to put in the dimensions of your tray so you know what uh, volume of soil you're using per tray. And I've put a multiplier here in, in a 40%. And that's because often uh, soil comes loose and it gets compacted into the trays. And I found this to be a fairly accurate number. If that's too high or too low for you, you can adjust it. And if you're using a, a bigger tray but not filling it up all the way, you want to make sure you adjust this as well. As you may recall from workshops, I recommend a smaller, shorter tray filled all the way to the top. Calculations down here for your sanitizers for both Sanidate and bleach. Sanidate being your uh, your uh, paracetic acid. And then below is packaging calculations. So this one's a little tricky. Uh, it's going to be, it's often really, really hard to know what kind of uh, packaging you're going to need throughout the season. Uh, but this is kind of just based on uh, two types of packaging, a retail clamshell and a bulk roll bag. And we can look at um, what that looks like throughout the season as we get moving. This uh, tab here is for your wages. So you may run this business on your own. You may run it with a group. You may run it with some friends. Um, there's lots of different ways. I recommend putting in the wages here, even if it's just you. Set your wage at wage three. And if you don't feel you pay yourself a wage, set it anyways. Uh, what we're trying to do here is create a realistic scenario so we know what we are or are not making in terms of our business. So just putting in your top wages here. Uh, these are sort of Canadian values that calculate Canadian pension plan and employment insurance, uh, your work safe or workers compensation fees. And then we actually just add an extra 10% of just the time where you're just in between tasks and do nothing. Talking, tweeting, smoking, doing whatever. Uh, we just build that in there. Annual overhead cost is a really important aspect uh, of these enterprise budgets uh, because these actually get distributed throughout um, throughout your your enterprise. When we look at this in terms of field crops, we distribute it often amongst the growing beds that we have. Here, these overhead costs are spread amongst the trays. So here, as we get into further calculations, we're going to learn that our, our projected annual production is about 7,200 trays. And so it costs us $2.81 a tray uh, to distribute this over, these overhead costs. So without even producing anything, we've already paid $281 or $2.81, sorry, for a tray. So if you do farmer's markets, it's good to include those in your costs. Uh, this is a list of real farmer's markets here in Vancouver for 2019. So this model here is built as if it's going to uh, be started next year. These are the fees, the number of markets we're intend, uh, attending. And I also put in a, a calculation for kilometers to market. Um, it's a thing we often forget about, the time and energy that goes into getting to market. And what I've just done is put in a 52 cent kilometer uh, per kilometer price, which is basically going to cover some fuel costs. So, you know, just attending farmers markets, you can see costs us about $5,000 there. Okay, so this is an extremely important spreadsheet here. Um, here again, you can see if you look up into this section here, you can see that uh, our uh, our crop names here, like I talked about earlier, they're all fed from that first uh, calculation spreadsheet we worked from. And there's three things that you're putting into this section here. So one is your the weight of dry seed you're sowing per tray, because that is going to help calculate the cost of that tray. And then this model is based on having two package sizes, basically a small retail size and a large bulk size. And everything you do should basically be multiples of those. So in this model, the small size is as small as it gets. We don't do anything less than 125 grams in, in terms of these guys or 40 grams in terms of these guys. So we don't do multiples of those. And then for the larger bulk sizes, we do, you know, one, this is uh, grams. We're looking at basically a pound. You can do pounds, two pounds, and half pounds. So everything we do are, are multiples of those. And then here we've got uh, a similar calculation here. So I think our large size is about 3.6 times uh, our small size in this, in this model. 
So here's another list of the markets. And uh, the reason it's duplicated here because this is because this is actually going to feed the crop planning spreadsheet, which I know is the one that everybody's after. Um, and what this does is actually an ongoing list of your markets. So you would add a market here and generally never take it away. So you've kind of got an archive of, of, of markets. Um, it breaks down your start and end date. Uh, and then you can uh, you just basically showing whether they're active or not. That way you can actually filter them out. Uh, if you don't want to show inactive ones, you can just show your active ones here. So if I was to do that and take the blank ones out, you can see it's just showing those ones. So we'll leave it like that for now. So this is our client list. So once again, this also feeds the crop planner. So this is our main client list. So you can see it's, this is going to have all the client names. I just have generic placeholders in there right now. I have that same filter here so we can we can keep this very simple if we want, and our, we know that our clients are going to change over time. Did that the opposite. There we go. Oops, I didn't. Not sure why that's not working, but it doesn't matter right now. Um, so here's where you're putting all your client information as well, uh, your delivery instructions, contact details, small and large pricing, uh, and this will stay. You will never take a client off this list. You will just put them as active or inactive. That way you've got a record of your past and present clients and you know people that you can go back to. So this is the crop planner, and this is the spreadsheet that people might be familiar with from previous screencasts and, and one that um, you're probably really looking forward to, to using. So this one, uh, again, is used to do your weekly calculations uh, of your, your production. And I'm not going to go into detail now that my previous screencast does that. Um, but what it does, it's a basically a week by week uh, where you enter your, your expected or confirmed sales for each of your markets and each of your clients. And what it does is calculate, does all the calculations down here about how many trays to sow based on your yield. And your yield, uh, in the beginning, you can do an estimate or, or draw from other resources. But after a few weeks, your yield is going to be based on your three week average and that spreadsheet will calculate that automatically. So once you do so, you want to put in your sowing rates, you want to keep them consistent. And then you want to start when you do your harvest, you're going to enter your, your uh, harvest information below. And that's going to give you your production information and generate averages over a season. This is based on a two harvest a week system, but you can just use one or the other. It doesn't matter. And you can change the days and the dates as well. Once you change this first date here, all the other dates in here change automatically. These can be collapsed here on the left. So if you're working on Friday and don't want to see the Tuesday stuff, you can close that up and open up Friday. And that just makes the spreadsheet a little bit simpler. Uh, this is a very, very big spreadsheet. So simplifying it uh, makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to close those up. So along the top here as well, you can also close the weeks. So once you've done this first week here, you can see I've got it listed as week one. Once you've got your harvest done, you've input all your information. You actually don't need to look at that again. You can close that up. And so you can see it just ends up being a small little section here. And as you go through the season, once each week's data is entered, you can close it up. And that way you've got a simpler and simpler spreadsheet to look at. So I'm just going to open those back up here. So if we look at our up here in the corner, this is our um, right here. These are um, what our projected sales are based on the spreadsheet here. And if you remember going back to our um, our introduction, sorry, our season sales, our target here at twenty five hundred dollars a week means our projected annual revenue is about one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. So I built the crop planner based on that. And so you can see once I entered all my information for my projected restaurants and my farmers markets, I ended up with weekly sales of about 2,500 and 126,000 per year. There's our goal there. And there's just a, uh, a note here about our harvest tray limit. And, and there's a little warning in there as well that if you go over that, basically the spreadsheet's going to say like, hey, you're trying to sow more crops uh, than you've got. So that's not an option. So that's a very short look at a very big spreadsheet, um, but uh, that's one that we can go over in detail if you want to do a consult and take a look at this. So once this, the crop planner is all filled out for the season to get your projections, this uh, spreadsheet here breaks it down. 
what it does is it takes your target revenue, it shows what your actual revenue is going to be, and this gives you your projected profit as well, a breakdown of revenue per tray uh, versus your target revenue per tray, and also your cost per tray as well here. So this is some pretty important information in the end. Um, what's important here to remember, you know, some people might look at this and say, oh, $6,900 profit, that's not, that's not very good. But what you have to remember is that's profit to your farm and it assumes that you have been paid for the work you've done. And this is a really important way to look at things. A lot of farmers often say, we don't pay, our, pay ourselves. But then you, it's hard to know whether you're actually making or losing money. So this is built in as if you put in your wage and your pr projected profit is basically um, what the farm is making. So this projected profit's a little lower than we'd like it to be. Um, ideally, we want it be to be in the 10 to 12,000 range so we can start creating a buffer. So we've got about 10% uh, of our revenue uh, as backup in case we need that for a future investment. So we've only got $6,900 to put into the business uh, in, in future years here. Obviously, you can put in your own money by lending it to the farm, um, but we want to get that a little bit higher. We can do that in lots of ways, which we won't get into now. Crop production costs here. So with all that information we put in previously, this is kind of just a breakdown of how the different trays work. You can see all the trays right around here kind of cost uh, close to the same. Uh, it's just going to depend. That big difference is going to be on your seed cost, and that's going to vary per tray. And this breaks down the revenue you would generate from each crop as well. So quite a bit of information in there. This here, if you're doing any, um, if you're doing any uh, mixed trays, uh, you can use this calculator to calculate that the actual cost um, of that producing that tray based on the different seed that go in there. All right, moving right along. You can see stuff is color coded in here. It means they're kind of grouped together, so that kind of helps reference things. As as you could see already, we're 16 minutes into the spreadsheet. You're probably already rolling your eyes. You know what? This is a good time to pause. Go get a drink, have a smoke, something, and then come back, and then we'll continue. Okay, we're back. I'm assuming you paused it, and everything kind of is rolling along, and this seems really natural. If you didn't go and do that stuff, then it is kind of odd, but that's okay. Let's move on to the next part here, looking at uh, the process production costs. So when you're producing microgreens, there's many different steps, and it's good to understand how long it takes to do each of those steps. So these numbers up here, uh, once again, these are feeding in from previous data. So as I talked about, these spreadsheets are all linked. And the reason to do that is because if you change data in one place, it's like, oh, I want to see what 180 trays is like. If you change it here, it doesn't change the previous stuff, the previous references. So it's always good to go back. And you can always chase, trace stuff back by, um, by looking up in that um, window there to see where things came from. And sometimes you might have to trace it back a few uh, to a few different spreadsheets because there's a link to a link. Uh, but I've tried to avoid that as much as I can. And after a while, you'll get a sense of where you should be making changes and where you shouldn't. Once again, you don't change the orange cells, you only change the green cells. So based on our previous wages that were put in, you can see there's options that they're auto filled in here. So with each of these uh, steps, this is really going to depend on you to figure this stuff out. So what you need to do is go in, time yourself or time somebody else doing these processes, record that and enter the information here. So this is information that I've put in based on uh, th th what we've done in the past. I can see those aren't consistent. Put those up like that. Um, so I have a good sense of what it takes for me to do this stuff. So I might be faster or slower than you. So you want to change these numbers so you're more accurate in terms of what, um, uh, what your system looks like. The reason why that's important is because based on this number of trays per week, this is going to tell me, okay, in order to fill those trays, I need to allocate 222 minutes. So that's four hours basically a week. It goes into just filling trays with soil for one person. Obviously, two people can do that in two hours and four people can do that in one hour, all that sort of thing. So it gives you a sense of how to build your system around the number of hours that are needed to get all the tasks done. And that's a really, really important thing to know. Uh, you know, a complementary thing to that is if you're doing one task, you cannot be doing another task. You can only do one task basically at a time. And so that's why it's important to do tasks efficiently and get them done as quickly as possible. You know, you don't want to rush, but it's important that uh, you think about this. There's only so many hours in a day. And in the beginning, uh, there's a good chance you might be working another job. So you need to do this stuff as efficiently as possible. 
So this is just for each of these, for filling trays of soil, for sowing trays, for cleaning and sanitizing trays, for harvesting and packing. And this one's really tricky to, to get, so this is a bit of an estimate um, based on experience in the past, but you'll, you'll get a sense of these numbers once you start your operations. And then deliveries as well. So deliveries is a huge range. Uh, the food peddlers do their deliveries by bike within a limited range. You might be doing your delivery in a vehicle to several cities. So that, that's really going to be something you're going to have to work out over time in order to do um, to, to some accurate estimates. Um, crop maintenance. So you, get, you have to water and rotate crops and do a bunch of stuff. So these are kind of some general sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, baselines for that. You'll get a sense of that from the flow uh, that you should have learned from the workshops. And then just general harvest cleanup. You know, every time you do a harvest, uh, you're going to have stuff to clean up and wash and sanitize. So this is stuff you need to think about. These are all the steps. And some of these steps often get forget forgotten because we're thinking about growing and harvesting sprouts. We forget about cleaning up afterwards and cleaning trays and dumping trays in the compost, things like that. Those are part of your hours and they need to be considered. All right, have another sip of your drink there. Good, good. Okay, next one. This is, a, this is another very big spreadsheet here. And this is the daily hours calculation. And this is just sort of a day by day um, way to go through and say, what tasks are we gonna do at what time and who's going to do them at what wage? And this is a very, very tedious worksheet, but you only really need to do it once. You know, you need to understand your workflow to get a good sense of the time it takes to do a task, the wage you're paying people to do that task, um, and, and you know, how many days, you know, maybe you can't prep all your trays in one day, uh, you need to do it over two days. Here you can see I fit all four hours of that tray prep into Monday. If you want, you could split it into Monday and Wednesday. Anything can go. So this one is already set up um, for a version there. So this, uh, once again, our wages feed from earlier, our, our, our number of trays we're going to produce a week is fed from earlier, and for each day of the week, um, this stuff all autofills. So once you've done uh, your January numbers for each, each, uh, for each day, that automatically fills every other month. So it just kind of basically gives you a template to work from. These are also collapsible, just like the other sections we looked at, so it makes a uh, you know, once February passes and January passes, you don't need to look at those anymore. So it makes it really, really simple to kind of keep things uh, a little consolidated. Summaries of things at the top, so you can get a sense of, you know, how much, you know, you can see we spend a lot of money on Tuesdays, more so than Mondays, not a lot on Wednesdays, you know, a bit on Thursdays, lots on Fridays, Saturdays. Sundays, we barely spend anything. So you kind of get a sense of what your days off are or your light days are. So that's just a way to help with that. I'm just going to open these back up here. I put these references up here just to kind of give you a sense of, okay, I need to, these are the number of minutes for each of these tasks I need to account for. So with all that, um, this spreadsheet breaks down um, your projected costs for the different components we talked about earlier. So based on this model, we'll spend about $5,300 on soil, $8,600 on seed, $293 on sanitizer, and about $2,400 and $190 on packaging and labels. So yeah, summarized up here. So this is a model. These are estimates, but it's going to be a fairly close estimate, I think, to um, what you'll be experiencing. The weekly workflow gives you a sense of what you're doing on a weekly basis. Once again, this is based on a two day a week har or two week, uh, two days per week harvest, Tuesdays and Fridays. I never know how to present this. So I've presented it in two different ways up here and down here and more of a linear flow. I don't know. Look at this and figure it out. I've done some color coding and grouping things. Just, you know, basically every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, you do the same things all the time. Uh, so it's a little monotonous, but it's also very routine. So it's hard to mess things up. Uh, this is also based mostly on an eight day or seven day cropping cycle. As your cropping cycle days get longer, these systems get more and more difficult and your real estate, your space for trays um, actually becomes more and more difficult because you have much more overlap. And even though you may want to produce 50 trays at a time, if you have long cycles, you actually may need space for 150 trays at a time in order to have space for everything if it's growing on a long cycle. 
Uh, I've put in a few numbers here for crop yields. If you don't have any of your own data yet, um, you can just draw from here. Uh, there's a lot of sources online that have uh, have have some references and. The challenge is, once again, uh, your yields are going to be very unique to your situation. Uh, you know, I talk to people all the time and the range of um, the range of yields that I see between different farms is quite incredible. So um, definitely, you know, this is a good start. Uh, there's still some gaps in here, but anytime you grow a crop, look up some uh, look up yield information on the Internet, start recording your own and then give yourself a good a good sense of things here. This gives you a sense of how many clamshells or small retail packages you might get per tray based on these yields. This is just a quick reference that a lot of people have found really useful. You know, breaking down, like this is the number of small units, uh, production units you can get per tray, what we're calling clamshells, and this is the price you could charge for that clamshell. So if I was getting five clamshells per tray and I was charging $6 per clamshell, that tray would be worth $30. This here, the green area, is kind of the, the range in which you usually end up. Uh, so keep that in mind there. Um, my filter's coming on because it's getting nighttime. I'm just going to change that and you're going to bear with me. Thank you. Da, da, da. Um, so this is kind of the range you can end up here. It's going to, once again, this is going to depend a lot on your market. So you can just adjust this for whatever, for whatever works for your, um, for your system. Um, and you can change it for currency as well. This is all based on Canadian currency. This here is just a reference sheet. So this is actually actual numbers from uh, my production system from years ago, just giving you a sense of what this looks like. You can kind of see where the hours peak on Tuesdays and Fridays here, whereas Wednesdays and Sundays are, are the days are there's not a lot going on. Saturday as well, with most of those uh, hours accounting for farmers markets. The reason you see peaks on Thursday isn't because there's occasional work on Thursday. It's because that's the day when people remember to enter their hours before Friday payroll. So a little glitches in the system. Couldn't be bothered to correct them. And I just like pretty graphs. So it's just more of a reference to give you a sense of where some of the numbers uh, that I've used in here have come from. Uh, ordering seed. If you want to um, order seed and get a sense of how much seed you need for a specific period of time, you can do that in here. Once again, just remembering entering stuff in the green cells, not editing the uh, orange cells. Once you've done a seed purchase, it's good to archive things uh, here. That way you've just got a record of, of everything in one place. This is a very big spreadsheet, uh, but because you're using it, you might as well basically, you might as well have as much stuff as you can in one location. This is a little calculator to use uh, if you want to include shipping with each of your um, with each of your seeds, and you can give a per kilogram price uh, of shipping to apply to the seed. If you don't use this, if you just put the seed price here, you need to make sure to add shipping to your overhead costs because that needs to be accounted for. Shipping can can account for several thousand dollars worth of expenses over a season if you're getting several loads of soil and seed. So that's really really important. So that's that's an overview of most of the, the the production stuff. Here, this last bit here is just for sanitizing. So you would have seen some of these sanitizing rate sheets previously, and this is just a breakdown of them. They've been a little bit updated here with costs, uh, so you can kind of get a sense of, of things here. And they're they're already basically pre-filled for from basically one to a hundred trays for all the crops that are in here. There's a template at the end, so you can easily add another uh, another one if you're adding a new crop and that stuff needs to be sorted out. So, you must be totally overwhelmed at the moment. And you're either thinking to myself, yourself, what the fuck am I going to do with all that? Or you're doing cartwheels because this is so awesome! Um, I go between the two myself. Um, this is a lot, and a lot of these tools you may not use. They may be extraneous, and as long as they don't link to anything else, go ahead and delete that, that worksheet. Uh, if you're really new to this, or fairly new, especially in terms of scaling up and running a business, the more time you spend going through these different sections and understanding how your costs affect production, how everything fits together, this is a really good way to do that. 
Um, this is a tool I'll be using in future consults for anybody looking at, at building their business, starting the business and understanding the economics. This is basically developing your financials as if you were doing a business plan. And it breaks everything right down so you're not just saying, oh, I think I'm going to do 20 hours a week or I'm going to do, you know, just evenings and I'm going to do five hours. Uh, you know, th this actually allows you to calculate that because often we, we forget about a lot of things and, and this is a way to um, make Make sure that it's accurate. A few other notes, you'll notice these little numbers here. There's a four here and a two here. I've made comments in a lot of these uh, worksheets, so they give some instructions or little tips and things like that. Uh, there's varying amounts in there. So this, this worksheet here is filled out as if it's ready to go for that size of operation and, and those prices. Uh, the worksheet that I am going to make accessible to you is going to be blank. So uh, I can give you this one to view, you can take a look at it, but uh, to be honest, if you want to take this one as a template and work with it, sorry, but you need to pay for it. Uh, I'm working out costing for that, uh, but I can guarantee you any price you pay for this will pay for itself within the first uh, two or three hours in the spreadsheet. So I am really trying to develop a tool here that you're going to find useful, um, that can be built on, that's powerful, but over time becomes easy to use. And really, it's helping you understand what the financials and what the inputs look like in your business. And I'm hoping that this is going to make people uh, a little more successful as they try and, and build uh, a microgreens operation. If you're just doing small scale operation microgreens for fun, for a few little things, um, this may not be the, the thing for you. This is really more if you're really looking at scaling up and, and increasing production to generate a good portion of revenue for this. Um, so that is the overview. Uh, I hope that was useful to you. Um, have another drink, sit back, relax, go through and take a look at this in sections if you need to, and uh, get in touch if you want to try it out.